It's not just the ATF that is practically criminalizing gun enthusiast culture. Remember how last week we talked about that gun-grabbing federal agency which is charging two men for selling novelty items by stretching the definition of machine gun to include even engraved pictures of the parts needed to turn a semi-auto into a machine gun? Well, now it's even credit card processors who are feeling the squeeze. With so many leftist activists quick on the trigger these days, with the cancel culture we live in, some credit card processors like Elevon have decided to use data from gun control groups such as every town for gun safety to at least try and protect themselves from lawsuits. But all they've ended up doing is imposing a flawed understanding of the law to restrict legal gun buyers from making purchases. Joining us now to discuss is John Crump, an NRA instructor, constitutional activist, and investigative journalist for AmmoLand.com. Thanks for being here tonight, John. Thank you so much for having me. Great. So what are some of these products that are being affected by this flawed data that you found? Okay, there's a few different laws that are going into effect and a couple that are have been thrown out by the court and they all surround polymer 80s and other unfinished firearms, frames and receivers, which according to the ATF are not firearms. There is a new regulation that's going to go into effect on the 24th, but that's not in effect now. And what Elvon was doing is using data from every town Every town sent them a list of states that ban these items. The problem with it is Nevada, for example. There is a lawsuit that got their law thrown out. And then there's an Illinois law that doesn't go into effect until next year. And they wanted these companies like 1776 Supply and JFD Supply to show them that they weren't shipping to these states where it's totally legal to ship to. They eventually backed down after pressure from gun rights activists and just the general public. But it's really scary that they used data from every town and other anti-gun groups to impose their regulations. And you think part of that maybe is Elevon was concerned about potential litigation and they, they thought maybe they'd get ahead of it by working with groups like Every Town for Gun Safety? Or do you think maybe there was more of a political angle to this or is that still up in the air? No, I think it was to try to prevent them from being sued. If you look, D.C. just sued Polymer 80 and was just awarded $4 million for advertising to people in D.C. when they weren't av actually advertising to people in D.C. Polymer 80 had an FAQ, a frequently asked questions section on their website, and it said, are 80% kits legal? And it said, yes. It wasn't talking about individual states. It was talking about nationally. But D.C. was able to sue them for $4 million, saying that Polymer 80 should have made it explicitly clear that you cannot ship these to D.C. or buy them if you're a D.C. resident. We've seen in recent years a lot of calls to go after gun manufacturers with lawsuits. Uh, and so it seems like the, the left, especially the gun grabbers, are trying to go after the supply of guns to kind of dry up the supply to go after gun culture that way. Do you think with what was going on with Elevon that it was almost something similar where uh, many gun retailers or those who sell accessories for guns, uh, you know, weren't able to really sell their product illegally uh, because some of these credit card processors were saying, hey, we don't want to be caught up in this. We don't know if there's lawsuit issues. Do you think in many ways that was hurting the, the revenue of these, these uh, manufacturers? It absolutely was. I worked directly with the industry, a lot of people in the builder community, which sells Polymer 80s or MUP ones from JSD Supply, which is a SIG version of the P80. But a lot of their credit card processors have dumped them and they had to scramble to find other credit card processors. And this is directly due to pressure put on them by Brady and every town and all these anti-gun groups that go after the credit card processors. I think that they're going to try to start going after the MasterCard, Visa, and American Express next. But it's really scary for these companies right now because they don't know if tomorrow they're going to be shut off. And speaking of all this, I mentioned the ATF earlier. Uh, you've also written at length about the ATF, and specifically, uh, there was a resignation letter that just came out by a former ATF agent who was saying that he felt like he couldn't deal with the politicization of the agency anymore. I was wondering if you could speak to that a little bit as well. 
Yes. Not only him, but other agents that I was spoken to are complaining about how politifies the agency is basically they give you what they want and then you have to find the evidence to prove that them right for example we're talking about p80s and other homemade firearms kits they want them to turn up things on ghost guns to prove that these kits are a danger. So what they did is they took uh, ghost guns and they lumped them in there with other firearms with serial numbers removed. And they're calling all those ghost guns and they're trying to politicize it by putting it directly on Polymer 80 and JSD supplies firearms when it's not. And it's just not only the builder community, it's other things inside the ATF, the people that they go after, the People who are not breaking any laws, but they are being targeted by the ATF. And these agents don't want to do that. They want to get the violent criminals off the streets. Most of the ATF agents I talk to are actually gun people. It is very interesting, and it's just really sad to see how everything is unfolding these days. And just lastly, before I let you go tonight, I saw you also put out a new article today uh, that I was hoping to touch on because uh, this summer, of course, we saw the Second Amendment rights, uh, the Second Amendment victory in the Supreme Court with the Bruin case out of New York, the concealed carry case. Uh, And you were writing that a federal judge in Minnesota is actually ignoring the Bruin decision, at least in part. I was wondering if you could elaborate on that for our audience tonight. Yeah, that was amazing to me that a federal judge on the district level could ignore the the Bruin decision. The Bruin decision says you cannot use scrutiny or any other test besides the actual text of the Second Amendment and historical records of the Second Amendment. You can't apply intermediate scrutiny. You can't apply public safety clauses. And this judge in his ruling stated that, yes, you can The Bruin decision said that you cannot make some place a sensitive area just because crowds gather. And in the judge's ruling, he says that the Minnesota State Fair is a sensitive area because crowds gather there. So he just totally ignored the Bruin ruling. And I'm not sure if he didn't read it or maybe he decided just to ignore it and he's an activist judge. Who knows? But right now it's scary because I'm seeing other judges doing similar things. You're exactly right. John, keep up the great work at Amalyn, and thank you so much for joining us tonight.